Hello. We are going to be doing some art today with watercolor paints, making trees and talking about color. The first thing we're going to need is our long skinny piece of paper and a ruler. And I want to talk to you about rulers a second. I want you to all look at your rulers and find the one. And you can see there's a bunch of little marks and then there's a bigger line and then over by the one there's a really big line. That line is our one line, okay? Not the lines above the number one, but that big line next to number one. That's the line that's most important today that we're going to be using. So I want you to follow along with me. I'm gonna go slow and we're all gonna do this together. We're going to make a one inch border on our paper. If you hold your paper, your ruler, we want zero to be on the edge of the paper. Now, if your ruler does not start zero at the edge, then you're gonna to have to move your paper until zero is at the edge of the paper. But hopefully your ruler is just right there. The end of the ruler is zero. You'll notice that your paper is hopefully, if we cut it right, about six inches wide. We're going to make a mark. We're gonna start with the long side here. We're going to make a mark right at that one inch mark. So one inch right on that line. So this is what I want yours to look like. One little line right in line with the one. So do that with me, please. So make a mark somewhere, not right on the edge of the paper, but somewhere near the bottom of the paper. You can see I have about a finger width space at the bottom of my paper. So make a mark at one. Then we're gonna slide our ruler over here. And once again, same thing, we're gonna make a mark at one. Okay, nice little mark at the one inch spot. Now, we're gonna turn our rulers and we're gonna line up our rulers with that, those two little lines that we just made. And we still want zero to be right at the edge of our paper because we're not just gonna be drawing a straight line, but we're also going to be measuring as we draw. So my ruler is lined up with the lines. I know, I am so confident because we just measured that the straight edge of my ruler is one inch from the edge of my paper because that's what we just measured. I don't know how far from here to this edge of the paper it is because we didn't measure that. So we're gonna measure that right now. As I hold my ruler, zero's at the edge of my paper, my two little marks are lined up. Okay, everybody with me? Ready? I'm gonna put my pencil at the one inch mark Go straight, I'm gonna go through my mark. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It's really hard to do this up and down like this, but you have a desk, so it should be easier. Keep going, keep going, keep going through my mark, and then I'm gonna stop one inch from the edge of my paper. What's one inch from the edge? My paper is 18 inches, so 18 minus one is 17. So I'm gonna stop at 17, and the 17 mark is exactly like the one inch mark, the big line right by the 17. None of these lines above the 17, it's the big line next to the 17. So now we have a line across the bottom of our paper. And if everyone could put their rulers up like this so that the teacher can look around and anyone who doesn't have their ruler up Maybe we need to pause the video and help them a second because the next step are all gonna be exactly like this. So rulers up, let's pause a minute, make sure everyone has a line on their paper. Okay, we good? Now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna put my ruler over here. I'm gonna make a mark at one. Gonna slide my ruler down. I'm gonna make another mark at one. Okay. Put 
my ruler across. Doing two things, right? Touching both lines and making zero is at the edge of my paper. And now, this is so tricky. I'm going to make start at one. So important, right? I'm not starting at my dot or my line. I'm starting at one. I'm going through my line. Through, keep going, keep going. Through my next line and stopping at 17. So everyone do that a minute. Draw a line from one to 17. So now our paper should look kind of like a railroad track with two lines going down both sides. I'm gonna make my second line a little darker here so you can all see it. Okay, now this part is so easy. We already measured that this starts at one inch, right? So now all we have to do is take our ruler and connect the ends of our two lines and boom, we're gonna have one inch from the top of our paper. Boom, do it on this side, boom. So easy. So all we had to do was measure those two long sides and then the short sides were so easy, right? Okay, so now we have a rectangle and we could take our ruler and measure and anywhere around here would be one inch because we measured it. We used rulers for drawing a straight line and for measuring, okay? Good job, everybody. Okay, once again, let's hold our rulers up to make sure everybody is to this stage. If we're not to this stage, Maybe we need to pause and wait for everyone to pack up. Once we're all ready, we're gonna take our rulers and we're gonna set them away where they're not going to bug us and be in our way. Now we need a Sharpie. This is a thick black Sharpie. We're gonna start at the bottom, whatever side you want to be the bottom. And we're going to draw um, the ground. We're just going to trace the bottom line that's the only line on here that we're going to trace. We're gonna trace the bottom line, and this is going to be our ground. Okay, bottom line. Now we're gonna draw a tree. Ooh, trees are organic. Do you remember what organic means? Made by God. Nothing is straight. If a man made a tree, they'd be nice and straight and perfectly tall like a ruler. God, God did not make this ruler, a man did, a machine did. But God makes trees and trees grow from the ground and they are all different and none of them are perfectly straight and sometimes trunks are pretty good and straight. Sometimes trunks veer off into two trunks. Sometimes they have a big bend in it. So we want to draw just a really like organic tree. I'm gonna start in the middle of my line. I don't need to measure it, I can just guess. And I'm gonna first draw one side of my trunk. And I'm gonna take this and it's going to curve and then it's going to curve out this way and go right to the edge of my paper. Now I'm gonna draw the other side of my trunk. And the bottom of a trunk is usually wider and it's gonna get skinnier. So I'm gonna start about what a thumb away from my first line and I'm gonna get a little skinnier and then I'm gonna go out and this tree is gonna go up taller than the first one okay yours does not have to look like this if you want yours to have two trunks boom you could go you could do more of a V closer down to the bottom now I'm going to make this become a branch. So way down here, I'm gonna make a branch and then it's gonna taper off. It means eventually it's going to touch. Same thing over here. But actually, you know what? I kind of want another branch to come out this way. Okay, now I'm gonna taper it off and you can add this later, it's not a big deal. Okay, so now that I have my basic tree, we're gonna 
color the whole thing in. And we want to color nice and neat. I'm going to start at the bottom of my tree and I'm going to make little rows. And once again, it's hard to do holding my paper in the air. It'll be much easier for you on your desks. But I'm going to color in all one direction, making little stripes as I color up and down. Okay, and you can probably color a little bit bigger of a stripe because once again, I'm doing this in midair. So once your whole tree is black, then we're going to go back and we're going to add lots of great little branches. I'm going to go and I'm going to add a branch here and here and branches grow off of each other. So when I draw my branch, I trace, I start in the branch that I already have drawn and then I come out. So start and then come out. Start inside the branch and come out. And we want to have all these great little branches. And this one, oh, this one is a little, has a lot of branches. So maybe I need to add a second little part and make that look thicker. Needs an arm to hold up all those little branches that I made. And that's okay, you can do that. Over here. And branches overlap. Ooh, this one's going to overlap a little bit. Okay, come out. And we don't want to fill the paper so that it's solid branch, but we want to have a good four branches with three or four little branches coming out until we feel like we have a really nice full tree here. And you'll notice I am just drawing with my Sharpie. That is because we only have so much time, unfortunately, in art class. So if you're confident, you can do that, and I think you can. But if you want to do maybe your trunk in pencil first, just to be safe, but then all your other little branches, I think you can do Sharpie. Just to save a little bit of time. Especially if you know that you're not... This is going to help you save some time. So I'm going to show you the finished product. Here is a tree and then the watercolor behind it. So we want the tree. Oh yeah, and look at that. I added like little grass at the bottom like it's growing. Isn't that cute? You can do that too. Okay, but only, only at the bottom. The, the sides, we're going to just watercolor paint. So hopefully you've watched the watercolor painting video. You are pros now at how to watercolor paint. And what we're going to do is we're going to blend. So we're going to have three colors. I want you to pick three colors. And it's going to work best if your three colors I'm going to take a, are by each other. Okay, so red, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, green, something like this, okay? We're not doing black and brown, we're only doing colors, okay? Another one is purple, red, and orange. So pretend if it was like a circle, you would say red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, okay? So purple and red are right next to each other. So you could do blue, purple, red, or you could do purple, red, orange, but we wanna do three colors, three colors that are next to each other. So for this example, I'm gonna do red, orange, yellow. So I'm gonna get my three colors wet with a couple drips of water. And actually, we want these to be pretty wet and pretty light. And I'm going to start, you do not have to do like red, orange, yellow, you could do orange, red, yellow, if you wanted to, but I'm just going to do red, orange, yellow. So I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to get a nice line. Oh, it does not have to be straight. I'm going to start at the top. 
and I'm going to let my paint just be really light and really wet for right now. And then I want to come about here, about a third with the red. So that's a lot of red that I'm going to paint here. So I'm just, for the sake of time, I'm just going to make another stripe. And we want it to be really wet. I don't know if you can see that, but look, it's like dripping wet. And again, I am painting up and down. You are going to be flat on the table. So hopefully it won't drip. Now I'm going to take orange and I'm going to start my orange. And while it's nice and wet, I'm going to let my two colors touch each other and bleed. And I'm going to spread those colors around. So for my first swipe of the new color, which is orange, I'm going to let the two colors bleed and blend together. Okay, and look how beautiful that looks. But now my brush is not orange anymore. It's red orange because I touch the red. So I have to make sure I wash my brush before dipping back into the orange. Now I can continue painting just orange. And if you notice what I'm painting, I'm going right over the tree. I'm not trying to go around it because of course our tree is solid black. It will not make a difference. I'm also painting in stripes right to left. I'm not going up and down. We want to keep our paint nice and neat and going all in the same direction. When you get up to the edge, it does not have to be a perfectly straight line. Okay. Now I'm going to turn into yellow here. So I'm going to get a nice wet, drippy, wet stripe of orange. And I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to take that drippy yellow and drippy orange and make a stripe and let them blend and bleed together to create a oh, yellow orange. And I can go right back up into the orange to really blend those two colors together. Okay, doesn't that look fabulous? Wash my brush because my brush is no longer pure yellow. Go back, get some yellow, and then I would fill in the rest. And I know my example had four colors. I don't like how this turned out. I wish the whole picture would have just been a sunset. So that's why I changed my mind and we're just gonna do a whole like sunset behind the tree. So three colors, they must be next to each other with the exception of purple can go with red and red could go with purple. But we wanna do three colors. We wanna make sure they blend. We do not want perfect stripes at all of the color. And then of course, the last thing to do is just put your name really nice down in the bottom corner and you will have a beautiful tree with a sunset. I hope you liked it.